Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we would be discussing about what is the importance of references in queues and how do we set user-defined progress in a queue item so that we can actually keep a track of where did our code met a fallout. So whenever we talk about reference, the first thing that comes to our mind is setting a unique reference to avoid duplicacy in the transaction item of the queue. So over here, you can see whenever you create on create a new queue, there's an additional option of enforcing unique references, which actually prevents you to have duplicate entries in your queue, which means all the transaction items should be unique. There should not be that all the property or key value pair of one transaction item should be matching with the other. Otherwise, you'll not be allowed to actually push that data into the queue. So this additional option of enforcing unique references avoids duplicacy or redundancy. But that's not what we would be discussing here in this particular video. The focus of this particular video would be an input property that we get while adding a queue item, and that is the reference. So it's an input argument, which is a reference for the new unique, for the new queue item that we add into the queue. And the thing to note here is this property is available in 2017.1, starting from 2017.1 only this property is available. And it is not compatible with 2016.2 or any lower version of orchestrator or robot. So for you to use this property, the version should be 2017.1 or greater than that. Now, what is actually this reference? So this reference can also be used to link your transaction to other application, which is used within an automation project. And not just that, this feature also enables you to search for certain transaction. So as you know, that queue kind of follows FIFO thing, which is first in, first out, which means the first item that you have added to the queue. Now suppose you added item one, then you added item two, and then you added item three. Okay. And now you want to get item one to be processed first, but that would not be followed because the queue would pick up item three first, followed by item two, and at last item one. But if you want to defy this FIFO logic and pick up item one first, then you may need to set some reference to all the items you are adding. Say, suppose you added three as a reference to this particular item, then you added three minus one as a reference, which actually becomes two, and then you added three minus two, which is equal to one. So now this one, two, three actually becomes the reference of item one, item two, and item three. And now what you can do is you can get add Q item by setting reference one, and then that will fetch you item one. Then if you add one to one, which becomes actually two, which is the reference of item two, that way you can fetch item two. So instead of following FIFO, if you want to follow LIFO, which is last in first out, while actually getting the transaction item, you can use reference as the property to actually satisfy that. Now we'll see how do we actually achieve that. Now, suppose I have a queue here, which is a demo queue, or you know, I can create a queue. I'll say UI part demo. I'll not enforce unique references of now because this is just a demo, or even I can enforce, it's not an issue. And I'll create this queue named UI part demo. So I'll click on add and this queue would be created UI part demo. I'll open this particular thing as of now, this does not have anything. Okay, so let's just add a few things in this particular queue. So what is the name of the queue is the first thing that will be mentioning and that is UI part demo. Okay, now we'll go with mentioning the key value pair. So we'll say ID to be one. And then we'll give a name to this particular thing. Say we gave Joe. So these are the two key value pair that this particular queue would be having. And with that, we would also be adding a reference to this particular queue. Okay. So say the reference that we would be adding would be the ID. Okay. So instead of doing like this, what I would be doing is I would be creating an in argument with ID. 
and I'll name it say one. And I would be creating an in argument of the name and I'll name it Joe. Okay, so these are the two in arguments that I created. And instead of passing hard coded values, I would then be passing the arguments that I've created. So I've passed that. Okay, now that I've added all these queue items, I would also be adding the reference. Now the reference that you'll be passing should always be a string. You cannot add integer and all, but you can definitely add string. So I'll do ID dot to string. I'll pass that as a reference. Now, once I create this particular thing, I will simply run this thing and we'll wait for it to be added here. Okay, so now by this time it would have been added. Now I'll click on refresh. I'll have my transaction item here and you can see the reference is one. Okay, similar way, I would add another argument and this time I'll give this two and I'll change the name to say Anna and I'll quickly run this thing. Now this is the item two that I have added. Normally what would happen if you try to get a transaction item Okay, so now there are two things get queue items and get transaction item get queue item would give you everything. Okay, everything in the sense, it would be a list of all the queue items that is present. So irrespective of how many queue items are present, you will get all of the queue item and get transaction item is gonna pick one of the item in the new state and would return you. And get transaction item is gonna follow the FIFO logic, which is first in first out. Okay, I'll be adding another one with the default value three and the name as say X, Y, Z. Okay. So what this would do, this would add another queue item, we would get all the queue items. We'll just check it and get transaction item is gonna get us one value. And what would be that value? That value would be the first thing that we added, which was Joe and ID is one. Okay. So let's run this thing. I'll debug this thing to show that get queue items are gonna get all the values. Okay. Now that our debugger has come, we'll print. Okay, I think we did not store it. Okay, so we'll not be able to see it because actually we did not take the output somewhere. So, okay, we'll leave it there only. And now see, by this time we'll have three items here, which is one, two, three. The first item, which is the first in, would be the item to be first out and the status would change to in progress. So now if I refresh it, the status has been changed to in progress. Now, what if I want to defy this logic of first in, first out, and I want to get the item with a particular reference. Okay, so now I'll mention that whatever is my ID has to be my reference. So if you actually go and see what your ID is, your ID is three. So now this particular transaction item, the get transaction item is going to get you the transaction item with the value three, which was the last item that we actually inputted. And we would get this thing, Q items cannot be used. Okay, because that's a reserved keyword. So I'll rather use list. Okay. And I'll put a debugger here as well to show that this get queue items would get all the items irrespective of their status. Okay, so now this get transaction item is gonna get the third one, which was the last item to be put inside. So see, this with the reference, you can actually put a filter on what do you want to get, okay. Now, because see, this has thrown error because now we are trying to duplicate the records. We enforced unique references. And now if we are trying to input the same value and both the value matches the ID as well as the name because three and X, Y, Z we've already provided to the queue. So this would then defy the unique reference logic. So you'll not be allowed to enter this thing into the queue. So I'm gonna ignore it as of now to see what actually get queue item returns. So now if I see list queue, Okay. Okay. So it is inaccessible due to its protection level because we have reached the outermost thing. Okay. So I'll quickly go here and stop it. So now you can see this was set in in progress. The other thing that I wanted to discuss was set transaction progress. 
So now there are two things, set transaction status and set transaction progress. Set transaction status is the same thing that we use in RE framework. So inside the process transaction is a finally state where we actually set the transaction of the entire transaction item. We mark it as successful or we mark it as fail depending on whether there has been an application exception or system exception. The other thing for us to define user defined progress so that if a particular Q item has been stuck in in progress for some X, Y, Z reason, we actually do not get to know that where it failed. So for us to identify that where the, like at which stage the code errored out, we can use set transaction progress and that'll help us know that where did our thing actually got errored out. So I'll first change this value so that we have a new item in the queue because as of now, we do not have any new item in the queue. So I've added one particular item to the queue. Now I'll get this particular transaction item with the ID of course, so it'll fetch me the fourth one, which is the recent one that we would be processing. Now what I've been doing here is, I would define a user defined progress to this particular thing saying, uh, say suppose I performed login and I'll say, okay, login is success. So I'll set this particular transaction item status as login is success. Okay. The other thing that I would be doing is suppose I performed certain steps. Okay. Um, say I had a message box after login, I did certain things. Okay. So I'll set a message box saying um, transaction item dot ID dot specific content. If I actually want any key value to be printed, I'll have to pass its key. So I passed the key. Now, um, suppose I did, I had an assign here and I actually changed the ID. Okay. And I did it ID plus two, suppose. Okay. And then I want to again set the transaction progress to say ID has been incremented. Okay, and uh, then suppose uh, I got an error. So I'll throw an error explicitly. Okay, suppose I got some error. And now if there is no error, I wanted to, you know, actually set the transaction status as as a successful, but because there was an error, I could not set it as successful. So I let it go like this. Now we'll see how actually the set transaction process is progress is successful. Usually what happens if we do not set it, we'll not get to know that where actually a queue item failed. All that we could see is that it is stuck in in progress, but there's no way how we can check that till which particular part that particular our process went well. So there are a lot many scenarios in real time use cases that suppose you cannot retry, but you would want to know that till which step the process was performed, especially in finance and banking related use case. It is very important that you know you do not repeat the steps and you actually know that from where the robot couldn't perform so that it could be retried from that particular instance or it can be taken care manually. And for that to happen, you need to know that till what step your Q item went well and after that it could not proceed further because of which it is still stuck in in progress. So there's no way to know it unless you manually define the transaction progress. So what we'll do here, we'll quickly run this thing and this will add a Q item here first of all. So we got a Q item here, okay. So now for us to know, now suppose we had to perform login to some banking application and it is still stuck in in progress. We'll never get to know that whether it was able to even log in or it was not able to log in. But if we click here and not set to an instance of object, did we do something wrong? Okay, we did not pass the transaction item, is it? Okay, just a second guys. This thing was added here new okay I, I think get transaction item actually did not return us anything 
okay so we'll just remove this thing reference thing and uh, so the error was because the transaction it could not fetch any transaction item because of which this was all empty and that is why we got this error object reference not set to an instance of object we'll again add one more item and let's run it okay Okay, I think because the reference was two. Now this time our transaction item actually has a value. Okay, it's still null. Okay, so why is it null? It's because when we are actually getting the transaction item, we're not storing its value anywhere. So this is empty. So we'll assign this here, transaction item. Now this thing will have a value. And we'll disable add queue item so that we do not get that unique reference error. Now we have two new items in the queue, but the one that was added earlier would be picked up. So see, this went into in progress and it was picked up. Now, if we actually see our transaction item, it would have value. Now we would be setting this particular thing as in progress. So we have set it to login success. And how do we actually know that Okay, so if we look at here, this particular transaction item in progress three that was executed eight minutes ago. If we go here, there is no way by which we can know that where was this particular queue item failed? Why is it still stuck in in progress? In contrary to that, if we go to this particular queue item, we can actually see a progress thing here. So we'll have to refresh it because it's still not been updated, I guess. Let's go back again and check. So here is where you actually get that particular thing to show that, you know, still, okay, I, I, I think I'm checking the wrong one. This is the one that went into a minute ago. So you can see progress login success. So with this progress, you can actually know that where did your item actually failed. Now I would be printing the ID once I print the ID, so as of now, I've done some sample steps like message box and assign, but there could be a lot of meaningful steps following the set transaction process, which would actually help you in tracking where did the things go wrong. Now, because we have incremented the ID, would, we would now be resetting the transaction progress to reflect that the ID has been incremented. If we go again, you can see progresses ID has been incremented. Now, when this thing will throw the error, what we'll do is simply accept the error. And now because our transaction item was stuck here, ID has not been, ID has been incremented. So we know that till this particular step, everything went well. And after that, it did not went well. Now, if we remove this thing, okay, so which means there is no error. And when we do not have any error, everything will go as smooth. It will keep resetting the transaction progress. And at last, what it would do is that it would set the transaction as successful. So if we actually click on run file this time, so it'll keep setting the, okay, add queue item. Okay, the same error, duplicate reference. So we'll make it 15 and we'll keep this as unmold. And now we give this thing a rerun. We'll run this in run mode because we know that it'll add a new queue item. Then it will keep setting the transaction. We've got the reference as 15. And now if we go back here, we would have a successful queue item present. So you can see this is a successful queue item. And if you go and check the details, the progress is ID has been incremented. You can also set the progress to, you know, that after you have set it. Okay, one thing to note here is the progress, which is the user defined progress that you set, like ID has been incremented, login successful, mail sent, or XYZ, any steps that can only be done as long as the queue is in in progress state. If the queue goes to successful state or abandoned state or faulted state or any other state from in progress, you cannot set the progress of that transaction item. So for you to use this particular property of set transaction progress, the queue should be in in progress state, which is before you mark it as successful or fail, 
you can set the transaction process n number of times to keep a track of where the flow of your program is going. So that's all for this particular video. In the next video, we would be learning more about cues on how do we actually get the reference and set it, which is like a persistence activity, long running workflows. And we would dive more into cues and how we can leverage it for more complex processes. Till then, stay tuned and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Happy learning.